hey, it's me. I don't really know what happened there. The phone, my phone started ringing, and next thing you know, I was kicked off of my video. So I'm going to continue just a little bit further on episode five. This is, so this will be episode five, part two. Um, where I stopped was Rockefeller had all 95% of all oil refineries in the country, and he just dominated people. Became exceedingly rich. He crushed, crushed the competition, and uh, by reducing superior gasoline for a lower price, other people couldn't keep up, and so he crushed them. So the government tries to tackle the, tr the trust. They are trying to create a social safety net to protect the workers. The U.S. has a long tradition of laissez-faire capitalism. No regulation in the late 19th century, very little uh, legislation. Remember that in the 19th century, starting with Grant, Lincoln Johnson Grant, Hayes Garfield Arthur, Cleveland Harrison Cleveland, these people were pro-business uh, presidents. They were uh, very little federal government. We had the Constitution grants federal government very little power over the economy, and therefore it granted the president very little power to be able to do that. And so laissez-faire capitalism was the order of the day in the late 19th century. Even the presidents uh, supported big business to the dismay of laborers and workers. It's uh, laissez-faire capitalism is economic growth through unchecked greed. We have it today with Bezos. We have it today with Zuckerberg. We have it today with some of the biggest corporations of America. Uh, again, we are back at almost a new gilded age where corporations reign supreme in the United States of America and big business is unchecked in a lot of ways. Um, that is a political thing that's gonna be solved possibly by this presidential election. Um, we still have, not still, we are back to laissez-faire capitalism in great part. Uh, it's good to see the safety net still functioning. It does not. So the political cartoon showing no, it doesn't function. It's not saving anyone. Laissez-faire uh, also provides no safe social safety net for those unable or unwilling to compete in the marketplace. There's nothing. In the late 1800s, government finally began to regulate big business for the good of the American people. Uh, not till the late 1800s, and especially when we get to Teddy Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, we're gonna have Cleveland, but then McKinley, who's gonna be assassinated, who was pro-business, pro-business, pro-business. And then we get Teddy Roosevelt, uh, William Howard Taft, and Woodrow Wilson, who are called the progressive presidents. The three progressive presidents, Teddy, Taft, and Wilson, Teddy Roosevelt, Taft, and Wilson, are the ones that are gonna start trying to compete against these corporate uh, captains of industry and try to make them be able to have con be controlled. And that's the progressive presidents. Uh, but, so we finally start to regulate that in the late 1890s, but definitely in the early 20th century. Okay, so this is a famous political cartoon. You have to know about this. These are big business. This is a political cartoon showing that the Senate is controlled by monopolists. So monopolies, uh, the Senate is of the monopolist, by the monopolist, and for the monopolist. This is the steel trust. This is copper, like copper wire, copper trust, standard oil trust, iron trust, sugar trust, tin trust, coal trust, paper bag trust, envelope trust. So all of these places, these big, big, big industries, they controlled the Senate. They had them in their pockets. Whatever they wanted these guys to vote as, they controlled them because they gave them lots and lots and lots of campaign contributions. And so the real people that control Congress, and even today, massive industries spend lots of money to lobby congressmen to do what they ask them to do. And they do that through massive PACs, uh, political action committees, and or campaign contributions. We're back at that point today. The Sherman Antitrust Act was not effective because it was not really enforced until 1914 when companies in violation faced punishment due to the Clayton Antitrust Act. In 1914, the Clayton Antitrust Act, that was under William Howard Taft, one of the progressive presidents. Before that time, the Sherman Antitrust Act wasn't effective because it was not enforced against these giant corporations. Okay, and then the New South. This is where I was trying to get to before, and then I got bumped off. So anyway, uh, we'll pick up more tomorrow in class. Have a good day.